If you find yourself feeling stuck or blocked when it comes to money in abundance, or you find that maybe you're living paycheck to paycheck, or you are, you've watched the movie, The Secret, you're thinking about the abundance you want, you're thinking about the house you wanna live in, the kind of car that you wanna drive, you're visualizing yourself in the car with your hand around the steering wheel and what it would feel like for you to drive with the car, but you find that there are blocks or that it's not actually happening or you don't feel like you're moving the needle in the form of abundance, then this video is going to help you remove those money blocks so that you can finally allow more abundance into your life. And when you do remove certain energy blocks and money blocks in your life, you'll find that not only is there more synchronicity, but also you enjoy the process more. So things get easier. And that's exactly what I'm gonna share with you in this video is the most powerful money blocks that when you remove, just more abundance comes into your life, how you'll feel more in alignment in the process, and how this is the key to you really living the life of the person that you really came here to be. Welcome back to another episode on the Aaron Dowdy Podcast. Now today, we're gonna be going into understanding the limiting beliefs that we have around money and abundance in general. Now, when I, within myself, changed these money beliefs back in 2017, 2018, and even more recently, so much of my life changed. I had so many new opportunities come in, things got easier, I started enjoying life more. Now, first off, we're told certain things about money growing up that either aren't true or have kept us in a scarcity level of consciousness. Now, here's one of the things, I'll go right into it. What is one of the things that we're told most often about money? We are told that money doesn't grow on trees. Many times, maybe our parents told us this growing up. <clears throat> While they may have meant well because they were trying to conserve and trying to like live in a, in a mindful way when it comes to money, by telling and by giving us this mentality that money doesn't grow on trees, what ends up happening is that we develop this belief <clears throat> that money is either hard to make or that it's not something that is so abundant. Now even think about this though, this is what's funny in, in my mind about this idea. Money doesn't grow on trees, but trees, which makes up the paper, I guess you could say, is what money's made out of. So technically, the tree itself, like money doesn't grow on trees because it doesn't have to. Money's inside the tree, paper's inside the tree. And when we look even deeper at money, will realize as well, you know, money isn't even backed by gold. Okay, so first off, just lay that out there. Money's not even backed by gold. And money only has value because we've agreed that money has value. Money is just paper. It's just this, this paper that we all agree has value, but it's just paper and it's just a tree. So while our parents may have said money doesn't grow on tree, that's true. But it's actually not true because money is actually the tree itself. I'm looking outside right now. I see a beautiful tree and it is, money comes out of that. It like the, you could chop that shit up <laughs> and put it in the money like making thing and you would get that of, you know, you could make the money. But in general, what I want to more so put your awareness on and focus on when it comes to money blocks is understanding that when you become aware of the beliefs you have about money, you then start to free yourself from the grip of the old meaning. Everything in our reality is meaning. It is the meaning we give it, and it is also everything in our reality is a lack of meaning because we can take away the meaning we priorly gave to something. So when we experience blocks with money, with abundance, and love, anything, the blocks that we have are based on the meaning that we give to things. I used to give... I lived paycheck to paycheck for most of my life up until 2017 when I removed the energy blocks. And one of the things I had to become aware of is I became aware of what money really is. Money is energy. That's it. It's an energy currency that we use to exchange value. That's it. Value. Think of it and, and I will say as well, we'll get deeper on this in this episode. But when we talk about money being attracted into our lives, it's directly related to our sense of worthiness. 
worthiness. So how worthy we feel of having the money and also our own sense of self-worth. And our sense of self-worth is enhanced when we are doing what we are passionate about. Because when we are doing what we're passionate about, we ooze value. We're literally just us being ourselves. And when we're in our purpose, it's adding value to those around us. It's adding value out into the world. And then guess what? That money, that energy that you flow out is then coming back to you in the form of money. So when we change our perspective about money and we begin to break down some of these money beliefs and some of the money beliefs we're going to be breaking down in this episode is that money is the root of all evil. This is very common in the spiritual community, people that are spiritual. It's this big block when it comes to making money because on one hand, you want to be the spiritual enlightened person that's like, you know, on your path and in alignment. But at the same time, you also want abundance to be able to pay your bills and stuff like that. But there's this interesting like split that happens where it's like, I want, but I don't know, but I feel a little guilty. And then when it comes to money and abundance, realize if we have guilt, if we have shame, it's one of the biggest blocks to more money. It's one of the biggest blocks to really allowing an abundance. If I were, let's say I was getting on YouTube and I started making money and I started feeling guilty towards friends and family because I had this subconscious thing, this subconscious sabotage where I felt like if I became too abundant, I would abandon them and I didn't want to abandon them. I didn't want to be, what if, uh, this is something that happened to me too when I started getting on YouTube and making money. I was worried that if I made too much money, I'd become unrelatable to the people that watch me. I was literally afraid. It's like, well, in the beginning when I was making videos, I was living at my dad's house. I was selling women's shoes. I eventually went full time. And, but my stories were so relatable to people. But now that I have all this money, my problems are different. My challenges are different. And if I share authentically and vulnerably what I'm going through in my life, it's not relatable. So maybe I should just keep myself in this like safe little zone. And one of the things that we want to do to raise our money vibration or our abundance vibration is to release and let go of the emotions that are keeping us in shame and guilt. And what shame and guilt does a great job of doing is keeping us in safety zone. The safety zone may not be pleasurable. Some people's safety zone may be living paycheck to paycheck but it keeps you from stepping into the unknown. It keeps you from tapping into a new part of yourself. It keeps you from having to relook at your relationship with your family and your friends. To, it keeps you from needing to establish boundaries from other people. So one of the things when we're looking in today's episode is to the goal of today's episode is to help you look at different aspects of yourself that you may have been priorly unconscious and unaware of and when you become aware of this, it, it changes everything because you're shining light onto these aspects of yourself you've been unconscious of. And then you're able to then uh, shift your energy to allow an abundance in a completely new way. Now, what we talk about in this episode as well, we're going to be going deep. We're not just talking about surface level things like, look, I manifested a quarter. Yeah, <laughs> it works. Or even just like the stereotypical hypnosis things where like in the movie, The Secret, not throwing shade on The Secret. I thought it was a, it was a great movie that opened my mind up when I saw that back in 20, like 2008. But it's like you visualize yourself behind the car and you're like, room, room. And you're like, I feel like I have it now. And it's, that's an aspect of it. But a greater degree of this, I think, is letting go of the subconscious beliefs that we have that are blocking that experience from even coming in. And when you let go of these things, you let in a whole new version of you. Now, something that we're going to be doing starting on January 1st, 2022, is we're going to be doing a 21 day magnetic abundance challenge where every single day I'm going to be going live. I'm going to be bringing on experts in the money niche. And then also we're going to be doing breath work, getting clear on our life purpose, removing fear and worry around money. We're going to be doing all of this over 21 days and you can join right now. If you want to join this, go to aaronndowdy.com slash money, M-O-N-E-Y. 
Now's the best time to join. You'll get lifetime access to everything, even after the 21 days, if you ever wanna go back and watch the videos. Um, I go live and I bring people on, I coach people. It's the most, it's one of the most uh, fun things I do and it's also something I do that just massively over delivers every time I do it. And when I say that, you can just read the testimonials on the page and see what's possible, but I literally go live for sometimes an hour a day, <laughs> 21 days in a row. And uh, it's just a really cool experience, but you could join by going to aaronaudi.com slash money. Um, but let's first off look at that. So we got money doesn't grow on trees, but we know that already, um, that was a belief that maybe your mom and dad told you so that you could not buy so many action figures going into like uh, Toys R Us or something like that. Um, so now that you're kind of aware of that, what you can also become aware of is that money doesn't grow on trees because it's in the damn tree. Money is the tree itself. And money, so we can become aware of that, but even greater than this, what the hell is money? Is it even the paper that grows in the tree? Or what is it? Money is an exchange of energy. Money is, it's one of the forms of abundance. It's not the only form of abundance. And a lot of times when we talk about becoming abundant, we block out other forms of abundance. Somebody may want to give you something. Maybe you work somewhere. I know uh, my girlfriend's mom, for example. Where she works is she lives in, a, like, she is able to, I don't know if she lives in the house, but she works in, like, this really nice help where, house where she's, like, helping other women become, uh, like, not addicted, like, not be codependent on drugs and alcohol. So it's like, like one of those halfway houses or something like that. But anyways, I think she gets to live there for free. It's, like, one of her benefits of that job. But if, if she was, like, only money is the way of abundance, I don't know, it'd be, like, she'd block out that way of coming in. So... The reason I share this as well is I've had times in my own life when I was first going full-time on YouTube in 2017, where I got offered to go for a $5,000 trip to go to a place, do plant medicine in Costa Rica, went and did it, changed my life. And, um, I got to go for free and all I had to do is make a YouTube video on it. Didn't, wasn't money directly, but it was opportunity. It was like an exchange of value. So realize that money is a side effect of you emitting out your sense of worthiness, your sense of value by you being you and you being in your purpose. And then money comes as a reflection of that. And when we start to realize and we start to reframe our idea or our meaning that we give to money, a lot begins to change in our life. So let's also realize this. Here's another game changer. This completely changed my life when it comes to money back in the day when I learned this. This one little idea. Money. Okay, let's talk about abundance and scarcity. So I've heard this from Bashar, but scarcity is that also money doesn't grow on trees, scarcity. It's like, there's not a lot of money out there. And all the US is doing right now, by the way, is just printing money. <laughs> there's a lot of money, it just keeps printing it, keeps printing it, not back by gold, but keeps printing it. So there's, there's actually a shit ton of money out there. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of money out there. But scarcity, now here's the thing with scarcity is if you are experiencing a lot of scarcity, if you are experiencing an abundance of scarcity, then realize this, there really is no scarcity in, in our reality. There's only abundance. And I say, how, okay, how is that? If you are experiencing lack, you are experiencing lack because you've been maybe focused on it. Maybe you believe that that's all you're, you're worthy of, but think of lack as an actual noun, as a thing of itself. So if you're experiencing a lot, a, a lot of lack, you are experiencing an abundance because remember, there's a lot of abundance in this reality, an abundance of lack. So think about that. Let that sit in. There really is no scarcity or lack. If there is, and we're experiencing that in our life, we're getting a lot of it. We're getting an abundance of it because there's an abundance of everything. But if we're getting that noun of lack or scarcity, it's because we're focused on it. We don't believe we're worthy of actual abundance or we're blocking it out from actually coming into our lives because of our belief system and our energy. So the thing is to become aware of where are you putting your focus and where's your energy because there's an abundance of everything. And once we become aware of this, this changes so much because then it it allows us to look at ourselves in a new way to see where am I putting my energy? Where am I, um, what am I focused on? What do I believe about myself that is causing me to experience an abundance of lack? There's not a lack of lack. There's an abundance of lack. <laughs> Think about that. 
And when I realized this, I then started looking at myself differently. I started seeing that I had a lot of shame. Many of you know my story, but from you know, seven to 15 years old, here's the weird thing too. I grew up in a house that was considered, most people would look at the house I grew up and be like, wow, that's a really nice house. And it was, we moved in, we, we were always the shittiest house in the nicest neighborhood. That's how my dad and my ex-stepmom did it. So we'd move into a house, we would then move into the shittiest house, renovate the house, and then we moved to another house. And when the divorce happened, when I was 15 years old, we lived in this really nice house. It's probably like a four or 5,000 square foot house in one of the nicest neighborhoods. I lived in the same neighborhood that Suge Knight lived in and some other, uh, Robert Goulet, some old guy. I don't remember. I remember trick-or-treating though. And there were king size candy bars in this neighborhood, which means it's a pretty good neighborhood or like, it, it, there was like horse stalls in there. So people had horses and stuff. However, we lived in the shittiest house that was like seventies style needed to be remodeled. And my brother and I lived in the mother-in-law's quarters of this house where there were uh, really low ceilings with like the popcorn on top of it. There was a kitchenette and it was very outdated and old. And there was a cage door there because that's where the gardener used to live. And then the nice house that got remodeled is where my dad and my ex stepmom and my sisters lived. My brother and I were locked on that side of the house. Normally we were given a bowl of cereal, gallon of milk a week, uh, looks like a box of cereal, and a gallon of milk a week and TV dinners at night. We ate twice a day. We were both very malnourished. I weighed, I think 115 pounds up until my dad went through the divorce. And then all of a sudden I was allowed to eat food and I started looking healthier, started gaining weight. Um, but even though we lived in this really nice house, all that meant for my brother and I is we were outside working pretty much all day, every day. We weren't allowed to have friends. We weren't allowed to watch TV, but we would be outside when my dad, who's a firefighter gone 24 hours a day, back 24 hours a day. And my ex stop mom were working. We were outside, had to work and a whole bunch of stuff every day that had to be done. So it's funny because I've seen like my ex step mom, my dad that had money, um, but then at the same time, my brother and I did not get to enjoy any of that really. So in my life, I, there was a lot of shame though, from also having my ex stepmom in my life who was mentally, physically, emotionally abusive. There was a lot of shame that I had where I just literally didn't feel like I was worthy. I didn't feel like there was, there was a lot that I had to give to the world. I felt like a lot of anger, I think towards, uh, my ex stepmom, um, maybe my dad for the situ allowing the situation to happen. And I could just see how a lot of my perspectives around my the childhood dynamics went into my own sense of worthiness. And remember our sense of worthiness directly is reflected into us with like money is a reflection of how worthy we allow ourselves to feel and how much we are adding value into the world with our sense of self-worth. And what I had to do is I had to let go of a lot of the anger I had towards my ex stepmom and my dad, and I had to start to let go of the limiting beliefs of the shame of believing there's something wrong with me. Because if we believe there's something wrong with us, then what will happen is we'll block abundance from coming into our lives because it's like, why would I even try? I'm only worthy of X amount. So this is something to become aware of, of, of your own relationship with your parents. And that's something we talk about in the 21 day challenge too is, it looks like you're going into an abundance challenge on manifesting money, but really it's about getting to the core of your relationship with your parents, understanding your own attachment style, understanding your sense of self worth and breaking down the old beliefs that we have. Because I think a lot of times, especially I've noticed people that have trouble with, um, abundance or maybe like finding their own purpose. I see a lot of times that there's also like a masculine wound there and that masculine wound is sometimes a reflection of that kind of energy dynamic. So when we talk about abundance, that's something that we want to become aware of. Now, also something that, uh, let's look at that other belief about money. Money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. Maybe even as a kid, maybe, you know, you saw people with money and you thought they were douchebags or you thought that they were, they, that they must have, in order for them to get money, they must have had to scam people. They must have had to like screw people over in order for them to get there. And what happens is, is we develop these meanings when we're kids and we're not even aware of it. Maybe our dad said that about people like screw that person. That's that or something like that. And from our dad saying that we then take on that belief and we think that it's our own. 
And on one hand, later on in life, we're like, well, hey, it'd be nice to have money, but if I had money, I'd be evil. Or I would be um, like going against like who I'm, you know, my spiritual side of myself or, uh, you know, is, is this mixed things that we have to become aware of and we have to look at. And here is what money really, let me show you and help me help you reframe it and what I've understood money to be now that I've made, you know, a good amount of money is money isn't the root of all evil. Money, once again, is just energy. Money, though, is an amplifier of energy. Money is an amplifier. So if, what would happen if you gave, if you, if you see some narcissistic douchebag and you give them money, like, let me share with you a little bit of the, the dynamic that my ex stepmom of how she views money. Cause she's actually good with money. It, let me say this. She is, she's good at acquiring money. My ex stepmom. Um, and even after my dad, the divorce with my dad, she like had like her, own, her own business and stuff like that. So she's like somewhat successful. But what she did with that money and the way she uses that money with my sisters who that's their real mom is she uses money as manipulation. So if one of the kids wants to go do something like one of her, you know, my sister who's 18, my other sisters who's 19, 20, if they want to go and move somewhere else and my ex stepmom doesn't want that, she may threaten to cut them off. I'm going to cut you off. And you're not getting this. One thing that's a common thread in her family that her parents tell my sisters all the time is if you do this or you're a little, if you're a little shit, you're getting out of the will. You're not going to be in the will and you're not going to get our money. They say that all the time because money is manipulation and see money. That's how they use money. Now what like money can be evil and manipulative if the person that has the money is manipulative. But if you're a good person, you will do good things with the money. So money's an amplifier. So yes, maybe you've had certain uh, reflections growing up of shitty people with money. That was them though. Realize there are also good people with money. Money is an amplifier. There are certain people that make money that either donate it or they create systems or they create processes and ways to add more value out into the world. As I make money, my intention is that I take this money, this abundance, I grow a bigger team. And then from this team, I'm able to do live events. I'm able to do things that add more value in ways I'm passionate about so that I create a system towards helping other people or whatever. I can create systems with that. So it's an amplification of what's already inside of me. You know, uh, Wayne Dyer always has a, like a saying, he talks about an or like if you squeeze an orange, what comes out? Orange juice, apple juice doesn't come out. Um, mango juice doesn't come out. Like what comes out is orange juice because that's what's inside. What's inside of us is amplified with money. An egotistical little douchebag gets money. Guess what? He's going to be even more of an egotistical little douchebag. And sometimes that may come up for a while for him to then realize, or she to realize, Hey, I don't want to live in this ego egoic way. And maybe they learn from that. But you know, for me, when I started becoming abundant, I, I realized that like, I almost wanted people to know that I was successful. So I'd find myself, I had like this motive to where I would either want people to know I, I had a big YouTube channel subconsciously. I wasn't consciously like I have to, but I could just tell myself that I was like eager to get people to know that I'm a somebody that I like worked really hard to get where I'm at. And by becoming aware of this, I was able to see that that was inside of me. Why was that inside of me? Because when I was younger, I didn't feel worthy. I felt shame. I, I needed to like, I needed to like find ways of ninja in, in a sense of self-worth and validation within myself. And I had to become aware of this stuff so that I could then let it go to realize now I have value for just being me. Even if without the money, it's like I'm valuable for just being me. That's it. I have worthiness for just being myself. So we talk about also money being the root of all evil. Back in 2012, 2012, I went through my spiritual awakening and I started learning about conspiracy stuff and all this stuff in the, you know, money is a control system and it's brought down by the reptilian, like all this crazy shit. Right. <laughs> and from this belief system that I had, I then de determined that money is bad. Money is control. I don't want it. I'll just meditate in a fucking park. I'll just meditate all day. And that's literally a belief system that I had for a while. And what I had to eventually do is I had to let go of this. And now the way that I relate to money is very differently. 
I also, like when we say spirituality, we talk about spirituality. We say, oh, this person's very spiritual. What does that mean? Does that mean that they live in a cave and meditate? Does that mean that they don't accept money if like money and abundance is coming to them because money is less spiritual? Like what we want to do is we want to become aware. What does it even mean to be spiritual? So once again, we're looking at meaning. What does it mean for money? What does it mean for spirituality? What does it mean to be spiritual? And we're dissecting these meanings. Now, to be spiritual, something else I've heard Bashar say is some of the most spiritual people in our reality, they are, they, they don't even know what it means. They don't even know the word spiritual or spirituality. They may go fishing. Maybe they are part of a tribe. Like they're just being in alignment with their soul and their purpose. You know, we could say, are they aware that they are an eternal spiritual being living a temporary human experience? Because if so, then that means they're spiritual. We all have these different meanings, but why are we determining, you know, if everything's an extension of us, right? We've got the grass, the trees, this fence, this, uh, this house, this mic, everything's an extension of our consciousness. But then we look at money and we think, whoa, you're dirty, you're dirty. And what we're really saying is like, I saw the movie Narcos and money was very dirty in the movie, Nar the show Narcos which I'm almost done with season three of the Mexico, the Mexico one, <laughs> but money would look very bad. You know, it's funny. There's, you, you want to talk about plant medicines. You're like, where, where's Aaron going with this? He was talking about money. Now he's talking about plant medicine. I was talking about, I was thinking of Narcos. Okay. So Narcos, they talk about this, this, this plant called coca, which makes cocaine, which is a very low vibrational way to use the coca plant. Now in Colombia, and in the plant medicine community, there is something that in that part of the world is known as Mumbai. Mumbai is very sacred. It's considered, uh, I think Wolf, that Wolf guy, what is his name? David Wolf has said that the coca plant is one of the best, most powerful, potent superfoods that exists. And Mumbai is something that I've used before. It goes inside of your mouth. It is this, it's, a, it's like a form of, um, of coca plant that's been crushed down and it goes in with amble, which is it's considered a mapacho paste that goes in your mouth so that you create saliva. You put the stuff in your mouth and it sits in the side of your mouth. And they say that it, means, it makes your, your words sweeter and it gives you a little bit of a stimulation. It's nothing like cocaine, even though it comes from the same plant, but it's interesting. We're looking at the meaning of this beautiful plant, by the way. The coca plant's considered the heart plant. It's this beautiful plant that's been completely like abused and stripped and put into this thing called cocaine, which then has been used in a very bad way, which then also has this money that comes from it, you know, from like in the show Narcos and stuff like that. But what I'm getting with this is based on how you use and the meaning you give to something, you can get two very different things. If you look at this beautiful coca plant, it can make Mumbai, which is this beautiful heart centered thing back in the tribes. What they would do is maybe the night before they would go into like building a hut or something like that. They would get together. They would do Mumbai, put it in their mouth and they would figure out the process of how they're going to build the hut the next day. And then the next day they would take the Mumbai and they would use it while they're doing things while they're building the hut and stuff like that. So it can be used in a very beautiful way way. That's very stimulating and very good. It's very subtle. It's not nothing like what, you know, people do cocaine, but it can also be used and stripped and abused and then brought into this white powdery thing synthetically that then, uh, causes a lot of havoc and craziness in the world. You see? So the meaning, it depends on the person, depends on how they use it. Same with money. Money is energy. Money, we'll get back to basically what I've said many times in this episode. So spirituality is, we came here to have a 3D physical experience. I love living an abundant life. I love being able to travel. I love sitting in first class. I fly, I, f I sit in first class. I'm not trying to brag with you. I'm just telling you my lifestyle. <laughs> I love that about my life that I have the abundance to do so. I love that I have a house in Sedona and a house in Austin. I love that. Now, even as I say this right now, maybe it triggers something inside of you. You're like, oh, this cocky asshole talking about his two houses and traveling and stuff like that. That is what I'd like you to become aware of is those beliefs, that judgment. Because if, if that, if you'll notice that like 
this is just in general, but like I have compassion also for people that maybe comment on my channel that don't like me or say like, screw this guy, screw you, blah, blah, blah. Because once again, if there's an orange and you squeeze it, what comes out? What's inside? If somebody's angry and mad about someone else's success, it means that they're not happy with where they are in life. And I've never seen someone that's killing it in life, loves their fucking life, is doing amazing things that then comments on someone else's video and is like, screw you, or something like that. But in the same way with money, because I'm abundant, when I look to people that are also very abundant, I've had that happen recently where I, I go to a friend's house who's very successful and has such a cool lifestyle, such a cool backyard. It's like at a, maybe a different level, I guess you could say, than, than where I'm at. I'm like, whoa, that's inspiring. That's cool. But I'm not like, screw this this guy for this money, blah, blah, blah. Because if I did have that mentality, that judgment, it would keep me in a scarcity mindset. It would keep me from getting to the next level because why would I want to go to the next level to be that way, you see? So realize that to be spiritual, you came here to have a spiritual experience, but having money, having abundance, like we may not incarnate, incarnate often on the planet, but when we do, we want to enjoy it. I imagine like the Seki commercial. So I say that because you know, people would be surprised to probably see that. Like I live in a nice house. Um, I've figured out, like I've, I've become very abundant because I've learned, I don't know, I've, I've just really in alignment, I guess, and um, focused on like creating systems that add value out into the world and stuff like that. But I like nice food. I like luxury. I wear luxury clothes and luxury, you know, like things. And I just want you to, I want to, my goal with telling you this is to help you because you probably view me or maybe you view me as like a very spiritual person that's making spiritual content on YouTube. But I just want to say like, I also think that money in abundance is a reflection of that spirituality. So I enjoy nice things and I don't have shame or guilt around it. I don't think I'm any less spiritual because I enjoy these things. Now, if I were to get lost in it and say that I'm only worthy if I'm wearing Lululemon joggers, and I'm only worthy if I'm living in a 5,000 square foot house and I'm only worthy. Well, that's when it becomes like the balance goes too far on one side, you know? So if you can be aware of where you are and be aware that in the moment you can enjoy something without getting lost in it, that's powerful. If I were to go and like just unconsciously eat unhealthy food that maybe tastes really good, maybe it's at a luxury steakhouse here or something like that. Well, guess what? I get lost in it, that's one thing. But if I can like go and enjoy life and go eat at an amazing restaurant, then that's cool too. You see, there's no guilt in that. But you wanna become aware of the shame and the guilt that comes up and even the judgments that come up around money and maybe how you even judge other people that do have more money or money in general because that is what's going to block you from experiencing more of it. Now, another one of this is money will not make you happy. What, money won't make you happy, so why even try? Why even make money? Let me tell you what will make you happy. You being in alignment with your purpose and adding value out into the world will make you happy. What will make you happy is being in the moment, being um, like in the process of you living in your dharma, living with what you came here to do in the world. That will make you happy. Now the money will amplify that happiness. I will say that. It, 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 I will also say that I have had the, you know, this is something I wanna share with you guys too. Cause something that, um, you know, I have a, a business with my buddy Victor Odo and I, and what we do is we help people go full time doing what they love. And I always say this when I'm doing coaching and stuff like that, but it's so true. The biggest jump that I ever made in my life was when I went from working a nine to five job, selling women's shoes, getting paid $60,000 a year. And then I got, and I went full-time on YouTube, making videos every single day. I made about $60,000 a year, but I worked for myself. Biggest change is in that vibration. Because then instead of someone telling me what I had to do, having to show up, having to drive half an hour to work on the Las Vegas Strip every day for 10 years, which I did by the way, I could, eat the lunch that I wanted to. No one could tell me I couldn't stop watching a YouTube video. I could then make other videos. Like I bought my time back. Time is the greatest resource. Now, even from there, they say that if you make about $70,000 a year, up to that point of $70,000 a year, that base level of happiness that comes from that level of abundance, after that, it's like the law of dimin diminishing returns because you pretty much have everything you need. I found that to be somewhat true. 
When I could like go eat where I wanted to eat, there was a place in Vegas I used to go called Protein House and I'd go eat there and I would, I'd, I'd go there with my friend and we'd go to the gym and we had the abundance to like go make videos if we want. Like there was such a level of freedom to that. Now, I will say that that's somewhat true and I've also had the experience of having the goal, the thing that I really wanted to create in my life. Like for example, the YouTube gold button of a million subscribers on YouTube. I wanted that for so long. And I was like putting it on a pedestal. I couldn't wait till I got that in my life. And I thought about it for years. And then I got it. And you want to know how I felt? Oh my God, it was so worth it. It was like the best. No, it felt pretty normal. Even when, when I first hit 100,000 on YouTube, I remember thinking, oh, 100,000 on YouTube, 100,000 on YouTube. I, I got it. And then guess what? Like we, we got to 100,000 on YouTube. And then guess what happened? It felt normal. It's almost like you get the dopamine spike. And then it's like you kind of crash a little bit. Now, when we're talking about being rich and having a lot of money, it is somewhat true that when you make a lot of money, it just becomes natural. If anything, it's all that really happens is your, your, your problems kind of change a little bit. Like the challenges then become like, oh, I have to pay 40% of my money or 50% of my money goes to tax. That's a lot, you know? And if you don't think about it, you don't like put it to the side throughout the year, that becomes a little bit of a problem. The challenge I have is like, you know, if I share this, it's not relatable. Oh my God. <laughs> my old, other little self-sabotage beliefs coming up. Um, it's like, I have a Tesla and a Range Rover. I don't really need two cars anymore. I used to have it cause I was like going back and forth from like here to Sedona. I'm renting out my Sedona house now. So it's like, maybe I should sell the car. Like it's like having more and more things also sometimes becomes like, like a headache. I had a, uh, an ATV in, in Sedona. I bought a, an, an ATV and I, I only used it four freaking times. I used it four times and I paid $35,000 for this ATV. So what happened though, is it became a headache. Want to know how it became a headache? I bought a house in Sedona and I'm then told by the HOA that you cannot have your ATV in your driveway. I'm thinking I bought this house in this gated neighborhood. Why can't I have an ATV in my driveway? You can't have it in your driveway. You signed up to live in this neighborhood and there were all these rules. Couldn't have, if they, I'd get fined a hundred dollars a day if they have, if they saw my trash can from my driveway and if I didn't put my trash can in a certain spot, just these stupid rules. And then I realized I don't want to live in a place with an HOA. <laughs> I want my own property. I want my own. Now I have a half acre here in Austin and I get to kind of do what I want, which is nice. I'm like, oh, I don't have to, I don't have that, that kind of energy, but it became a headache and then I had to sell it. And then it was just like, you know, there's, there's little things that kind of change, but I will say the ATV didn't make me that much happier. If I would have rented an ATV four times, I would have spent probably like 1500 bucks and I would have not wasted like the five grand that I sold it. You know, I, I think I bought it for 35 and I sold it for 30. I paid like a thousand dollars every time I used it, you know, it'd be maybe better to do that. But the reason I share this with you is because Money may not make you happy because money is a side effect of you being in your purpose and alignment, but you being in your purpose and your alignment will make you happy. Like I'm excited to do live events. I'm excited for certain things. And what will come from that though is money is more abundance. So realize that those three beliefs, you can reframe all three of them. And you can also, the thing I'd encourage you to do is to become aware of your relationship with money. Do you have fear and worthiness and fear and worry with money? Because worry if you worry about money, there's like a lack of worthiness that comes with money with maybe thinking you don't deserve it, but there's a lack of trust that comes as well. So when you become aware of your relationship with trust, with worry, with fear, and how that relates to the childhood dynamics growing up, you can be honest to yourself. And as you are, you then allow yourself to reframe what money is to you. You're, you're able to reframe that energy dynamic with money. I have a friend of mine named Bridget, and she teaches something called uh, I think it's ancestral healing where you go back and you're able to see that the same money issues you have, your parents had, and you could even follow it black in your bloodline, like many generations. But because there was a generation, especially in the U S that talked about the, the great depression, that energy is probably within our great grandparents or our grandparents trickle down. And then eventually within us, we have this scarcity mindset. And one of the things on the 21 day challenge we're going to be doing is I'm bringing Bridget in. She's going to be helping us to release this ancestral trauma and this ancestral like blocks and, and so that we can heal to then allow money to come in in a very easy way. And there's a meditation, there's a process that she's going to help us with, with that, which I am so excited to do. So 
abundance in general and realize abundance isn't just money. When you reframe your realizing that money is just one form of abundance, you can say, you can then see that opportunity is abundance. Um, you can then see that there's like people can give you things. That's another form of abundance gifts, uh, the ability to travel like that is something that, that really comes when you begin to remove those blocks just in general. Now there is a video that I made recently that talks about the seven habits or like hacks to being a spiritual millionaire. There's, there's beliefs in there that I individually break down. This video ended up becoming one of my most popular videos on money and abundance. I highly re recommend you listen to it by clicking right here. I think it'll absolutely help you transform your life and help you to create that habit to raising your vibrational frequency around money. What you put out is what you get back, but when you go above and beyond, you open up new opportunities for yourself. I used to do this small little thing, and I'm gonna share with you in this video, the seven